There seems to be this weird notion going around on Championship Twitter right now that's suggesting that Ipswich Town have been lucky this season and that they're perhaps fortunate to find themselves top of the Championship after 40 matches have been played and that all their achievements this season have only been a result of the abundance of luck that they've supposedly had on their side. Just head to Twitter right now and you'll be bombarded with a series of tweets if you put into the search bar Ipswich and the word lucky. Now it is worth saying a lot of those tweets are from Ipswich's fellow promotion rivals and perhaps a bit of it stems from jealousy that they've been punching so much above their weight this season and into the automatic promotion race. But what we're going to be doing in today's video is taking a bit of a deeper dive into that notion that Ipswich have been lucky this season and why it actually is all just a bit of a myth. Now you'll have seen these tweets flooding on Twitter on Easter Monday as Ipswich scored another late winner in that dramatic comeback they had against Southampton. Absolutely unbelievable scenes at Portman Road, a result which put Ipswich top of the championship with 87 points after 40 matches have been played. And from going through a lot of these tweets, it seems like that's the crux of a lot of people's arguments that the amount of late goals Ipswich have scored this season for some reason that's only down to luck and not the quality of the team itself. Before we dive into Ipswich themselves I think it's important to understand the very definition of luck itself. Going off the Google definition luck is defined as success or failure apparently brought by chance rather than one's own actions. So a lot of people arguing that chance is this external force which is playing into Ipswich's hands right now rather than tactical ingenuity of Kira McKenna, the quality within that squad and the momentum which is currently on their side as well. Let's go through all those points. A big thing a lot of people are talking about when it comes to Ipswich is the amount of goals they score in the last 15 minutes of matches and there's no denying that they do get a lot of joy within this time period. So far this season they've scored 18 goals between the 76th and 90th minute which is more goals than any other side has managed in that same time frame. They've also scored a fair few goals past the 90 minute mark, 7 so far this season in fact. Although even that number's the same amount as Coventry have managed this season and is three less than Southampton have scored in that time period. What I do find odd though is a lot of people are ignoring the obvious. It's common for good teams to score a lot of goals late on in matches. Last season, for example, Burnley scored the third most amount of goals in the last 15 minutes of championship football matches, including after the 19 minute mark. I don't think there were any arguments at the time that Burnley were this lucky side last season. They were just by far and away the best team in the championship. So it seems a bit strange strange that Ipswich fans are having to defend themselves and they're being beat over the head with this stick that they've been lucky this season for scoring a lot of late goals. I mean, that was the template of Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United sides for God knows how many years. Often, I don't think that boiled down to luck. It was just them being the best side in the league. Another big factor with Ipswich this season and what a lot of people have been talking about is how many comebacks they've actually had in matches. They've won 31 points this season after coming behind, which is way more than any other side in the championship. Leeds and Norwich the second most on that table having won 22 points each from losing positions but rather that being from luck I think that's more as a consequence of the style of football that they actually play you'd argue in a lot of Ipswich matches there's less control than the likes of Leeds Leicester and Southampton usually have that's reflected by the amount of goals they've conceded this season compared to those other three sides but once again having a different style of football which I'd argue actually leads to more entertaining games on the whole I don't think is a consequence of luck I think it's a consequence of the style of play you actually go for. Ipswich have scored more goals than any other championship side this season and they've also had more shots than any other side and more shots on target as well. That's not a consequence of luck, that's the result of being a very good championship team with a clear philosophy that's geared towards chance creation. On the opposite end of the spectrum I think that fans could potentially argue that teams get lucky or fortunate at times when it comes to refereeing decisions that can certainly have a big influence on individual matches whether a referee gives a 50 50 decision in your favor or not awards a penalty when another referee might have not done so but when it comes to Ipswich that logic doesn't really apply to them so far this season Kieran McKenna's side have only been awarded three penalties in 40 matches this season which is considerably less than the likes of Southampton Leeds and Leicester have been given Leicester in fact have been awarded 40 
times as many penalties as Ipswich have this season. So I think that myth can be busted straight away and promptly be put to bed. For me personally, I think you can make a valid argument that luck applies in individual circumstances when you think that, okay, maybe that team's got away with one, but when it's a repeated pattern of success, I no longer think you can argue that luck is the cause of that. I think what you're actually looking into is a very good and well-coached team with an unbelievable mentality. You don't play 40 matches in a league as grueling as the championship and only lose five of them because of luck. Ipswich are currently averaging 2.17 points per game and if they are to average that in their final six matches, they'll finish the campaign with 100 points and go down as one of the best championship sides of all time, like Leeds and probably Leicester will as well. Once again, accumulating 100 points in a league like the championship, that's not down to luck. One of the key reasons why this Ipswich story has been so miraculous this season is because they're up against, let's face it, three of the most expensively assembled squads in the history of the championship in Leeds, Leicester and Southampton. That's certainly not a dig at any of those clubs either, that's just the nature of the the beast when you do come down from the Premier League and you have those parachute payments available to you. The squads that each of them have assembled in the Premier League and the players they've all been able to keep hold of. Take each championship club's squad value into consideration for example. Going off transfer mark figures, Ipswich have the 16th most valuable squad in the championship and their numbers are nowhere near the likes of Leicester, Leeds and Southampton who are all comfortably in the top three. Before the season had started there was a breakdown of how much each championship club was paying paying out in wages as well and once again Ipswich nowhere near the likes of Leicester, Southampton and Leeds who are all way off in the top three ahead of the rest of the competition because of the parachute payments that they've currently got. And that's not to say that Ipswich are by any stretch these championship minnows, you know, they've got a very good squad of players which they've added to throughout the season, did some nice work in January as well and have cleverly used the loan market to boost up their squad. Even the squad they had in League One last season was far too good for that division. But the disparity between the parachute teams and Ipswich is still absolutely huge and the fact that they're above all of those sides right now I almost think that speaks and leans into the beauty of the championship and how gloriously unpredictable this league actually is so with six games to play this is the current state of playing the championship how realistic are Ipswich's promotion chances at this stage well if they were to win all six of their remaining matches they'd finish the campaign on 105 points and would definitely be promoted with that points tally but I think we can all agree there will probably be a slip or two somewhere in there for Ipswich if we look at their remaining fixtures the tough games in particular that they've got to come are against Norwich Hull and Coventry that East Anglian derby on Saturday by the way is going to be absolutely ferocious at Carroll Road isn't it I can't wait for that one you know what looking at all of Ipswich's matches on paper there are no easy games in there Watford have had a bit of a bounce recently under Tom Cleverley Middlesbrough looking back to their best in recent weeks and Huddersfield Field, still scrapping for survival as well and then you've got the playoff challenges to play in Norwich Hull and Coventry so if Ipswich are to be promoted especially as part of the top two this season they'll have done it the hard way I don't want to hear anything about luck being on their side or anything like that if they maintain their current points per game between now and the end of the season they'll finish on over 100 points which would be absolutely miraculous I think there's a good possibility that they score over 100 goals this season as well which would be absolutely bonkers and for me personally regardless of what happens between now and the end of of the season. Kieran McKenna is my manager of the season. I, I really don't think you can look past him. What he's up against, what he's got out of that Ipswich squad so far has been absolutely bonkers. And long may it continue. I'm proper up for this end to the championship season especially when it comes to the race for automatic promotion because the standard up there between all of the sides battling for it has been so high all year round but guys that will now wrap it up for today's video thank you very much for tuning in i welcome your thoughts on this topic in the comments down below do you think ipswich have had luck on their side this season or do you think that ipswich have made their own luck by how good they've actually been i certainly lean into the second half of that argument get all your comments down below and drop a like if you went on to enjoy. Make sure to stay tuned for some regular championship content as well. Plenty coming out over these next few weeks as we get into the finale of this championship season. And I'll see you all in the next one.